So you were talking about creativity in the church. Mm. <laughs> oh, man. What do you feel like the state of creativity? I don't even think that's the right question. What What do you personally see in the church world today when it comes to creativity and art? The good and the bad. What are you noticing? What are you discerning? I feel like I feel like creativity is so deep of a concept, you know, like <clears throat> because to be creative, right, is to glorify God, right? To use who you are to That's the like the, the that's foundation. The foundation of fundamental. creativity. So whether you're an atheist mm-hmm. or agnostic, you cannot circumvent the definition that creativity is to glorify God. Well, for them, it's expression of self mm-hmm. or expression. Exp- it's an expression. It's a manifestation of the human existence, right? That would be, I guess, a baseline for an atheist or a non-believer is expression. So in the church, we are expressing to glorify God. Now, I feel like where it's at now is people, I mean, it's like a renaissance phase, you know, like, I think we're figuring it out because it's a fine line between expressing to glorify God and expressing to glorify yourself, you know, like to create in the church if you're expressing for yourself to be heard, to be understood, then I guess this is almost like a question for you. Like, do you think that you expressing yourself and then giving glory to Christ is the same as you expressing the glory of Christ? Like an example of this would be like, I made this painting, right? And I showed the world the painting has nothing to do with Christ. So Mm -hmm. a song has nothing to do with him. But you say, I glorify God for this painting. Or do you you think that's different from this painting is a painting of Jesus? Yeah, I think they're radically different. Not radically. I feel like because the scripture in Corinthians comes up, whether you eat or drink, anything you do, do it unto the glory glory of God. God, And what that means is, is doing it with an acknowledgement and an awareness that Mm -hmm. it must point to his character. It Mm -hmm. must point to his redemption. It must point to things about him Mm -hmm. um, that glorify him. It can't just be like the the Metro Goldwyn Mayer movie intro, The Lion. Mm -hmm. It says, what does it say? Uh, Metro Goldwyn Mayer. Uh, Latin. I hope this cat doesn't get the uh, the purring doesn't show up on the mic. Okay, yeah, it says arts no ars gratia artis. Mm-hmm. So that is art for art's sake. Okay, which is a dead end because we make art for God's sake. Mm-hmm. That's why we make art. We mm-hmm. make art because mm-hmm. He is the art. Mm-hmm. If we're made in His image. Mm-hmm. We're not just doing it because art is a thing. We're doing it because we're operating and walking in an extension of a character trait, an attribute that he has implanted in us. Mm-hmm. So whether you make a song about, or a painting about, uh, I don't know, like anything. Mm-hmm. Like whether you make a painting about anything Versus it's a painting strictly like this is a painting about Jesus. Mm -hmm. If they're both being done with a heart posture towards worship of God, both both of them are considered like, they're both considered works of worship. Or works of worship. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do you think that worship is like the expression of the spirit in us? 
Absolutely. So then our worship is the physical manifestation of God in through our us. Our worship is the physical manifestation of God through us. Yes, because he makes us worthy to worship him. We mm -hmm. cannot worship him without his spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's you're right, you're right. So then the art should reflect that. Mm -hmm. And it becomes of God. And it becomes for God. Mm -hmm. And it becomes... Then that means... Like, I think we talked about this outside. Like, who interprets what it is? Do I say God said this is this? Or do some people be like, oh, I see God in this, naturally. Like, God writes some things in parables. So when it's up to interpretation, that gives room for the spirit to work. What does this have to do with the state? I'm... I guess I'm getting into like. Are you stating the stage? Yeah, that's okay. what we're talking about the the fundamentals of yeah. of Christian art. Yeah. Because some people, I mean, I could slap on a, a Jesus bumper sticker on a car and be like, oh, this is. Not even Christian art, just I would say art in general. Oh, okay, then art yeah, that's in general. Then this is way more expansive. But art in general, but the perspective of it being in the church. Because mm. my my opinion is mm. that. If we have the spirit of the living God, the spirit of the creator living in us, not so it's like a, it's like a almost, I don't want to say that word, but it's like a double anointing. The first anointing is that we're all made in the image of God, mm -hmm. but sin corrupts it and warps it and, and contaminates it. But we still carry those attributes to be able to create um, and to make things and to produce things. Like he can't take that, that's not going to be taken from us even with sin. You know, there's been but, some, um, I guess you can almost say, not not doctrines, but like philosophies, if you will, that like some pastors I've seen carry is that to be creative is like one of the essence of being human, is that we are all creators of our own. Yeah, and art, and creating an art isn't just like in a box of movies or music or books. It's like, in every, everything. everything. Like, you create a child, that's art. You design a building, that's art. You build a business from scratch, that's art. Mm -hmm. You're producing something, not ex nihilo out of nothing, but you're still like operating in the image of God and mm -hmm. you're creating and like that's the essence of being artistic is mm -hmm. being able to be crafty with what you've been giving, mm -hmm. given and turn it into something else mm -hmm. that is fruitful, that helps people that tells story, that inspires, that in, that motivates, that encourages, that is the essence of art. Mm -hmm. Creating and producing. Mm -hmm. My question is, specifically when it comes to the church today, is are we creating, like what are we creating and producing for? And what's the intention behind our creating and producing? <coughs> That's what I really want to see. Like, what do you think? What are you seeing in, in the church today? Mm. I think people, one, are creating for work. One. Work as in, like, to that's their job. To, yeah. to, to work it. That's to be a rapper, to be a painter, to be a clothing designer. Which is not inherently bad. No. But. It can it can distort the art. Because then you're worried about this world's goods. That and it 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 dilutes art. Being a lover of money. Not not just that, but you're focused on on the reception, and you're focused on it's not purely creating to create. So do you feel like focusing on the result? Yes, of yes. the art. Focusing on the result is, of the is art. That actually destroys the creative process or, or taints it? Personally, yes. Why do you think that? Because I think that to create with the creator in mind is an, is, is a intimate. It's an intimate process that if you allow your 
perspective or your idea of others into that intimacy, then you're no longer just you and God. Your focus is elsewhere, which can dilute or I guess almost hijack like the the download that you're getting. You know, mm-hmm. like like when I record, bro. When it's pure, it's just like it's me and God, man. Nothing, time and space go away. It's just I'm in this infinite sea of anything, and you it's mean like the holy twilight zone. I love it, bro. No place like it. But I know if it's wrong, if I'm thinking of the results. Mm. And it and it and it takes away from being present in that space. I can see that. I definitely I struggle with that at times mm-hmm. where I'll be thinking about the <clears throat> end goal of the film in terms of like screenings and where it's gonna be marketed and the mm. festivals mm-hmm. and the views and it's like I, I think about the end goal, like who's it gonna touch and everything. But like you said, if I if I'm forgetting to be very intentional in the in the process, of, like how people say love the process, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. if we fail to love the process, in my in my opinion, I feel like that's also like a dishonoring to the Lord because mm-hmm. the Lord is in the process. Mm-hmm. He not only sanctifies, like we we have to enjoy with grown folk joy, you know, the process of being sanctified, for mm-hmm. example. And he's completing the work and going to fulfill it in us until the day of Jesus Christ. We're his magnum opus. We're his art piece. Yes. And yes. he is yeah. so intimate with crafting us and molding us and turning us into something beautiful. Like we're his prized possession. We're his art piece. But it's not just art to him. It, it's like you said, it's intentional. It's mm-hmm. tangible. Now, it's relational. The only other perspective that I think is God instructed Noah to build an ark. Art. Which, which is different than me. Cre- like Noah didn't make the ark for God out of his own desire. He had to be instructed. So I guess it's multiple lanes. God can instruct you to create because he gives you a vision without a vision, the lack of vision, people perish. So God can give you a vision of art, which the result is only the completion of that art, not necessarily what God does with it. Noah didn't, no, no one believed there would even be rain. So mm. Noah wasn't thinking about floating with hundreds of animals. He believed God and it was coming to him. He believed it was coming. He didn't even know what rain was. But he didn't know what the art was going to do. He didn't know what the ark was intended for, how, how important of a real purpose it was, he was just like, all right, I'll make this arc. I mean, people think I'm crazy, but I trust you, God, whatever you do with this. So mm. that is, I guess, inherently different than me creating from my heart because you're, there's a crying out and then there's a pouring in. Mm. Crying out is a different form of art because you're expressing what has been building up or it's been inside of you and then an outpouring of God is what God gives you to go out wow I never thought of it like that Mm -hmm. because I felt the difference in in the things I've created whether it was music or Mm -hmm. music videos or short films I felt the difference between me crying out Mm -hmm. and it's coming from a response Mm -hmm. of like life Mm -hmm. versus God downloading something into it's me. It's different. It is like very you, you different. You feel the difference. Yes. Yes. I never thought about that. It's a very, very, almost, almost like not, night and day kind of difference. Because, I mean, and crying out isn't always painful. It could be worship from joy. It could be an overflowing of joy. Mm-hmm. It could be, it could be sadness. It could be anger. It could be grief. But there's also that set of instruction that God's like, all right. This is the world event, right? And God gives you the response to the world event or the solution to a set of social problems or whatever it might be, you know? Like there's different avenues of what that art can be. I, I don't even know if people think of, as for your, your response to your question, I don't know if the church thinks about it as hard as we are right now. The, the, the process of creating. 
the intentionality. I see a lot of problems with the church today, especially like, I don't want to name drop, but seeing the idolization of art and artistry and creativity Mm -hmm. in Sunday pulpits, trumping it and idolizing it over the proclamation, encouragement, admonishment, and preaching of God's word. Mm -hmm. Like it really shows what our hearts are really set for. Let me find this verse. And what we're really chasing. I, you know, <clears throat> how I always felt about it is, is the art. Sorry. We said this two years ago in a podcast we never released. Art is a reflection. Of your heart. That's the title of this. Right? That's, that's now, another is thing your heart. is Christian art is supplemental to your faith, right? And this is in Second Peter. Second Peter, I believe it's, where is it at? Five. Make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with generous provision of moral excellence, moral excellence with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, and self-control with patient endurance, patient endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, brotherly affection with love for everyone. So, this is spiritual growth. So supplement your faith with moral excellence, with knowledge, self-control, patient, endurance, godliness. Like these are supplements to your, to your faith, mm. right? I feel like where does Christian art like fit into that supplement? I mean, I believe arts is moral excellent. The style of art that you make is moral excellence. The style it needs of art. to be moral. It needs to be a, yes. of utmost excellence. But, but in no way at all is the art the message. Yeah, not at all. I it's don't. not the same as sitting down in the word we for two, three, four that. hours. Yeah. You know, like there's, it's not the same. And in a lot of places or cases, I can see people making it the same. You know, like me taking this five year break, bro, is like, that's, that should be necessary. That should be normal. People need to take breaks. People need to stop rest. and reflect and rest. In rest, do you find strength? Resting in the shadow of the Almighty. I was just reading that today in Isaiah 30. It says, in repentance and rest is your salvation. Mm-hmm. In quietness and trust is your strength. And after that, they say, and you would have none of it. You would have none of it. I want all of it. Yeah. So what are the things in the Christian church you see today? And don't be afraid to like, you know, call things out. Not I just think I think that 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 are like that grieve you, though. Like, what are things that you're seeing being practiced in the church today when it comes to creativity and art that is grieving you where you see it's actually pulling people away from? So what Christ? I think is, is the disconnect between the art and reality, like. People are making art and throwing these shows and throwing these events and doing what they do. And I don't discourage it. Obviously, it's good. But I'll talk about this situation. And I guess I felt some type of way because this could have genuinely changed the life of of somebody, right? Mm. So someone recently passed away. His name was Gabriel in the Christian community. I I heard about him. Right. And there was the uh, the GoFundMe, right? And it was for his funeral. They wanted to raise 15000 And I donated. I'm not going to say how much, but I donated. And I checked the next couple of days, and, like, I think only, like, a third of that was raised out of, like, 250 donations, right? And I'm like, bro, like, this is a brother, you know, that was well-known across the board. Fifteen people to donate $1,000 would have done it. You know, mm-hmm. I could say, I could say probably 15 different people who could have done that, you know, not to say like, oh, shame on them for not sharing. But like, like the power of what we are set out to do is to change the world and how to translate. It's not just propping myself to look good on Instagram It's like, dude, you have influence, you have finances, you have money of the ability to bring about a real life change to your community, to your people. You can 
visibly see the world change before you way if you if you put up a little more than than just bringing a few hundred people to your show if you get prayed over if you could get saved that's like just as valuable right i'm not i'm not saying that's not as important but like go to school get an education go to law school go to the places where you want to see the kingdom on earth respect the law of the land right as roman says mm-hmm. And the Lord will open doors and take you places that will see a change in the world. You can change the world. People, like, I feel like it's just a disconnect because people are like, oh, we're so against the world and we want to fight against the world and we want to be apart from the world but look as cool as the world. It's like, that's, that's how I see it is people are trying to be like the world. It's like, we can be Christian and hyphy too. It's like, bro, <laughs> like, you could get an education become a lawyer, become whatever, and sit in a room and free th- prisoners. You could, you could, you could, you can make things right in the world where you see so much wrong more than just your like social justice preaching. You know, I, I think that, I think mm-hmm. what I'm saying is like less action behind the, the message. I, see, the I think, I feel like what you're, what you're really trying to point at is you see a lot of just baloney talk in the Christian, cre- in the Christian creative circle where we're trying to prove that we can still be christian but this but like what we're mm. clinging to is like it's vain it's vanity it's looking cool for it's this cultural age. it doesn't matter yes it's cultural it's bro fading. that but but what you're saying is yes. like like why not i could be a christian and a lawyer i could be a christian and a doctor i could be a christian and a th- like things that will actually push forward the kingdom on in, uh, in very practical ways in the workplace in the workforce in a instead global of, way instead of trying to like but i that's a that's a whole other conversation because like culture mm. kingdom mm. over culture but kingdom and culture and mm. people trying to blend kingdom and culture mm-hmm. and like that whole blending of mixing and of dark and light it's like mm-hmm. it's at a, times even more so culture is what actually pushes things more forward than Maybe like, you know, healthcare advancements or things. I'm not saying it, it's not. I'm saying at times like all these different worlds do play a part in the mm-hmm. advancement of things. So yeah, where is that balance between, yeah, yeah. between that? Like I'll say Abraham Lincoln freeing the slaves, right? Couldn't have been done without you know, the word and without, without like godliness and mm-hmm. some changes and advances in, like you said, in healthcare when it couldn't be done without some ideas of culture shift. But I mean, I just think that there's a point where it's like, like you said, ref- like art is the expression of the spirit working through us, through our hearts, through our hearts. And God is light, light radiates, light, light goes out and the word goes out and never comes back empty that's one thing so everything serves its purpose but i think that the lord is looking for people like he sought out people like david a man after his own heart right and they're sanctified and people like that get roles and get to places that like, imagine Elon Musk before the church. What do you mean? A revolutionary. Before and people the like church. that. I mean, obviously, Elon Musk is like a science guy, right? But like, I mean, like, in a sense of, like, age? somebody who pioneers and goes out and influences and changes the world in a way like Martin, like Martin Luther of the Catholic Church, mm-hmm. right? Everybody says what? It was, I'm just basically saying being like Jesus. Jesus is, is remembered for till the end of time because he had 12 men, was obedient to God, and the ideas and his faith and his obedience to God spread out a change in bringing the kingdom to the world. And it's been advancing and advancing and advancing. But now there's so much opportunity for more advancement that is lost because people's desires are on the most shallow of topics. Mm. the most shallow of what god has in store the substance and the depth is is getting shallow is very shallow as time goes on yes we're not focused on eternal matters anymore 
no, we're no, focused no. on the culture of we're now. kingdom but we're also IP. <laughs> the culture of now yeah but it's just like do you understand that's already faded in the past the culture of christ is forever ever and that how reason. but how does that even like change your perspective to mm-hmm. rest in peace in him eternal rest what does that feel like what so is it just, that? It just comes down to we're trying to be so much like the world still. The idols of the world are mm-hmm. still in our heart and they mm-hmm. need to be purged mm-hmm. so that we can truly create and produce mm-hmm. and make from a pure mm-hmm. Because this is how it should be. Place. This is how it should be. They're responding to the world. We're responding. We're acting and being and sounding and wearing and reflecting a certain way so we influence the world to come to Christ or to accept us, or see us as able of being as cool as you. But we should step outside of time, outside of culture at all, and see for cultures ahead and cultures behind. What does God have for us to create that is timeless in and of itself? Like, the ages pass. I'm already dead. There's a hundred years if Christ doesn't return, a thousand years before me, and a thousand years after me. What is my current age? It is It is what it is. When you step outside of time, when you step outside of your culture, when you understand, that's why I love history, is because you see throughout history all the different shifts of, of culture, of art, of expression. And it's like, where where is the God culture, right? It's just like step to that place where you're outside of it. Question. You're outside of what? So when you see artists in the church, in the the Christian circle, is it easy for you to discern whether someone is just using the church to target audience and to heap upon their own lusts and to build their own kingdom versus someone that's truly operating from an Exodus 31 place and making art to truly build up the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. Like it, can you see that? I can see that for sure. How do you discern that? How, how can you tell? Like, what, what are the differences? For me, it's marketing. Mm. If your focus is how you market, you lost it. <laughs> You're lost. If, how, if, if I'm seeing reels every day, every two, three hours, Bruh, I, I'm tired of seeing it. I don't care. Do you think that's a do you think that's a a byproduct of just the age we live in in terms of like social media and how it's changed in order to like get something across versus or is it truly them like marketing, 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 marketing because that's what they're really for their own kingdom and not for the advancement of the gospel? Nowadays, right, you can make weather. You can you can affect and change the weather. The not to be conspiracy theorists, right? One more, this will make sense. You can put there's some planes who will put you know certain kinds of of sodium, some kind of something. Cl- it creates clouds. It creates weather. It creates wa- rain. They do this in in countries with less rainfall. You could create the rain, or you could be like Elijah. You could pray for the rain and like God create the rain. He prayed. One time, two times, three times, seven times, and you kept praying, and there was rain. So I can sit here and make real after real after real after real after real. I can make the rain. I can make it. Mm, okay. Or I can drop one, drop two, and pray for it, and pray for it, and pray for it, and let God bring the rain. You know? That's and just... You feel like that's what, that's how we treated your, I would say, like, your artistic expression and in, in music it makes it more it increases your faith more tell me about that because I, I remember you told me a while ago like you barely did any marketing or promo for your music <laughs> none when you first started none and you were blowing up zero i mean i dropped a couple of tiktoks like i was already gaining a little bit of traction because i would speak the word on tiktok or whatever but like i dropped whole albums nothing like dropped maybe a post that i dropped it a reel or two, and then I forgot about it. To answer your question, you basically said, how do you discern people who are, are, are really doing it for themselves or for God? For me, how I discern if it's for myself or for God is I let God do it. But I didn't 
try to do it. You know, like when I drop the music, I know it will touch you, it touches. God controls everything. He controls everything. He makes anything happen. He is in power. He is sovereign of all things. Whoever needs to hear this will hear this. That's just my, how I see it. Some people think otherwise. Some people think you have to work for it. How are people going to find you unless you, you do it, you know? But, like, I'm just the type of person where I'm not desperate to be heard. Mm. It will hear who needs to be, whose ears it needs to those with ears to hear. Because I'm not going to, why would I, personally, I don't want to keep pushing content to people who don't have ears to hear. I'm not going to throw my pearls to pigs. And I'll let the pearls be taken by people who want the pearls, you know? That fulfills me more. And I know that fulfills God more because I'm faithful to him. I'm letting you govern it, you know? So my philosophy, what fulfills me.